Hello beautiful people. Welcome to my channel. My name is Kristen. Today's video is my December book reviews. I do have one week left of December. I started reading another classic, but I may or may not finish it with Christmas and I want to bring you next week my favorite books of the year. I did complete my reading goal of 60 books for the year. So I'm super happy about that. My average book length of all of them was 414 pages. I read over 24,000 pages this year. So there was a lot of big books, <laughs> but a lot of really good big books. So I look forward to bringing you that video next week. The first classic I read in December, well, well, I'm not going to count the one I'm reading now. So the only classic I'm counting for December is The Iliad by Homer. And I had never read this. I have read most, at least, of the Odyssey. I know I read huge chunks in school, but I'm not even positive I read the Odyssey cover to cover. So I will be reading that one in 2020. I may do a video on the 12 classics. I picked 12 classics and then my goal is to read one a month. So I do currently own 12 classics and those are probably the 12 I'm going to read next year. So I may do that video as well. Maybe early January, I'll just share with you all my classics because I would love your input on it. So this one, if you have not read any of the Iliad or Odyssey. It is totally about the Greek gods and you have a story up in the heavens along with the story on the earth. This book is entirely about war. Entirely from beginning to end, war is going on. The gods and goddesses are all on different sides, so they are kind of warring with one another up in the heavens and trying to negotiate talks about their involvement or letting the mortals decide on it. And then down in the world is all of the actual chaos and it is quite graphic. I felt very much like I was reading like Game of Thrones or something with the impalements and the description of body parts coming out and that kind of thing doesn't normally, it's not normally my jam y'all. So I appreciated hearing some of the, you know, popular backstory about the Greek gods and all the kind of, um, new characters that I was introduced to in this story, but it just kind of hurts my heart to read too much war. This is, it was a, it was a fairly substantial book, um, about 450 pages of war. So I'm going to wait a little bit before I read the Odyssey, although I'm pretty sure the Odyssey is much more fantasy characters and a little bit more fun, if you will. But if you are interested in a hard classic, it was definitely worthy. The next one I read was Ellen Hildebrand. There you go. Winter Street. This I discovered is kind of a series. I'm not sure if it's the same people or just the same format, but this one is December 23rd, 4th, and 5th. So it takes place over Christmas. It's a family with grown children. Each of the grown children have some kind of issue, whether financial or romantic or um, with their children. And then the two main mother fathers have split up, divorced, and are dealing with different life issues. And so you kind of have five stories that are all coming together centered around Christmas holiday, which is fun to read in December. So I'm thinking that since there's a couple more in the series, I may just hold off and do one a year. It's it's a nice, light, easy read, even though sometimes they deal with heavy subjects. So appreciated that. The next one is my nonfiction for December. That was Taste and See by Margaret Feinberg. It is a book that has a whole entire curriculum for study around it. It is a Christian book. It looks at the foods of the Bible, particularly salt, olives, bread, and meat. And she actually goes to the butchers and the bakers and the beekeepers and the um, olive pickers and pressers and all that stuff and kind of ask them the question, how do you read the scripture in light of what you do every day? Because if you are not a person who picks and presses olives, you may miss out on some of the meaning of what the biblical stories are actually talking about when it talks about 
the oil or the olives and so it's a really good read that actually has recipes in it and when I did this as a study with my teenagers it is an adult curriculum but I did this with my teenagers and we did it on a retreat over a weekend and we ate we ate pomegranates we dipped bread in oil we ate olives we ate a bunch of salty foods while we watched and studied and talked about it and it was really highly highly enjoyable love it give it um a, a good good solid rating on that one this one i love all these light colors that are blowing out sorry about that is um i think two authors yeah mary ann schaefer and annie borrows the guernsey literary and potato peel pie society so this I didn't even know where Guernsey was. It is an island in the English Channel. So thankfully I get some of my ignorance. You know, that's one of the good things to read for, right? We learn so much. We are never too old to continue learning. So this is actually the format is, um, I don't know if I can show you, but it's, it's all set with a bunch of letters. So see that it'll like, have the date and it'll have who the letter is to and from and it, most of them are to the author as she's writing about this island particularly during the war during the second world war and all the goings on the soldiers away the occupation and the treatment of the jews those kind of things so the format of it's very interesting i really liked it it was a lot slower moving than i was anticipating for that topic but it was enjoyable. I liked it. A good middle of the road. Glad I read it. Not sure I'll recommend it to a whole lot of people, but solid. Then I read Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell, and I have never read Lisa Jewell, and I had forgotten how much I really appreciate a good suspense. So this is a story about a teenager who goes missing, and it's kind of that whole backstory of the family and dealing with that and kind of the case goes cold and how do you discern and, and figure these things out and you get different perspectives of the different people and so you're you're kind of on that pins and needles waiting for something to be discovered or something bad to happen or someone to be caught or all those kind of great things that a really great suspense will do for you and you it's not completely unpredictable but it has enough twists and turns and I really appreciate a lot of the characters and taking time to really develop them and I'm particularly interested when a book can turn and kind of show you backstory of maybe some of the less desirable characters and kind of get into their heads a little bit. I have a disclaimer Growing up, I was really into watching the serial killer kind of things and trying to figure that out, who done it, Big Agatha Christie, all that kind of stuff. So this is up my alley. I will be reading a lot more of her books. I give it a huge um, thumbs up. But my favorite book of December will be a lot of people's favorites, um, Daisy Jones and the Six. This would probably end up being on my top, although maybe the Seven Husbands of Eleanor Hugo will be there because I love this new author, um, Taylor Jenkins Reid, and this story is fictitious, but it feels very truthful, documentary style of a rock star kind of in the 60s, 70s era with the um, sex, drugs, rock and roll scene kind of touring with them, hearing their behind the scenes. Again, really, really short little blurbs from a, every single person's perspective, the manager, the, each band member, all the backstory of the love interests, all this kind of stuff. And it was just a quick, fun, easy read. Again, some heavy topics, you know, you're dealing with a lot of people who are struggling in, in life and trying to figure out coming of age in a situation of fame and glory and drugs and money and all that kind of stuff so fascinating loved it give this a five star if this doesn't make it into my top it's really close totally recommend it this would be the one that i probably will recommend to a lot of people particularly if i know i was also a huge fan of the documentaries around like the doors and all that kind of 
those those other bands that came out in that era. I just really appreciate that. So those are my reviews. Stay tuned. Next week we will do our top books and maybe we will do a preview of my to be read classics and you can give me your input if you've read any or what you think I should add to my list. Thank y'all very much. Have a Merry Christmas and a blessed day.